What's going on guys, I'm Brandon from Walker's Woodworks. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to do three quick projects in the shop you can give away as gifts or sell. The first project on the list is gonna be a combination of two things that take me back to my roots, pallets and coasters. I figured it might be cool to make some coasters that actually look like mini pallets. So I started out with some scrap three quarter inch walnut and trimmed it down to a quarter inch strips on the table saw. If you guys don't know, when I first started woodworking, I built everything out of pallets, as a lot of people do getting into this hobby. In fact, my first business name was Brandon's Pallet Creations. My friends still don't let me live that one down. But it got me to where I am today and to do what I love. Once I had several strips cut up, I trimmed them all down to four inches over at the miter saw. Once I cut the first one, I set up a stop block so I could make repeated cuts without having to measure every time. This also ensures that they are all exactly the same length. After I had all those cut, I went back over to the table saw to cut what could be considered the pallet runners, I guess. I cut these all to half inch by three quarter inch and then also cut them to four inch lengths. That's all the parts we're going to need for these cool little coasters. I'm going to assemble everything using my new Ryobi Airstrike 18 gauge brad nailer. In an attempt to make assembly easier, I clamped a square to my assembly table and then used the pieces for the coasters as spacers. I only glued the runners to the outer two and the center piece. I used CA glue and accelerator, then I flipped it over, removed the spacers, and secured them with 5 8 inch brad nails. That takes care of the bottom, then I flipped it over and just tried to space out four planks on top, evenly spaced as I could, using the same method to secure them. Once they were assembled, I used a sanding sponge to knock down any of the sharp edges. I decided to try a little finishing experiment with these coasters. I wanted to try three different finishes. The first one being Rubio Mono Coat, which is a hard oil and wax blend that I use a ton in the shop and I love it. The only problem with it on these is there's so many small nooks and crannies to get it in, it took forever. And then also you're supposed to buff it back off so it took even longer to get the excess out of the spots. For the second method, I used cutting board oil and just poured it all over the whole thing, capturing what didn't stick in a bucket to be reused, and then I just let it drain in a clean bucket. This method worked pretty good, but it still left kind of a lot of oil stuck between the planks and stuff like that, but it eventually dried and turned out okay. The third method is what I consider the best and most efficient way, and that's spray lacquer. This was by far the easiest to apply, and it looks good too. I applied four coats. Here's a side-by-side -side of all three. Let me know which one you guys like best. Another common gift people get for Christmas a lot I noticed is a nice bottle of wine, but it would be cool to put it in a gift box of some sort and what's better than a handmade gift box. So we're gonna go ahead and make one out of some white oak and some quarter inch walnut ply that I have. First thing I'm gonna do is come over to the table saw and then cut this down to the width I want, which is five inches. This piece is about four feet long, which should be plenty for what we're gonna use it for. I'm gonna get this trimmed down to width, and then I'm actually gonna cut the grooves down the whole length of the board for the top and bottom to sit in, because it's easier to do that now rather than try and run little pieces through the table saw. So we'll get to doing that. So if you've worked with plywood at all in the past, you know it's not exactly quarter inch or three quarter inch or whatever they say it is. So let's take a measurement here. It's a little bit less than a quarter. So what that tells me is we can do a full quarter inch pass for the slot that the top is gonna go in and have plenty of room for it to slide in and out. So I got this depth gauge set her at a quarter. You can use a ruler or whatever. You don't have to use one of these fancy tools. And then we can cut two passes because this is a full kerf blade, which is only an eighth inch. So we'll have to do a couple passes. 
What I'll also do is transfer those marks down the ingrain so I can see them because this will be on the bottom side. Just transfer those over here. That way I know exactly where I need to cut. I will use my fence to set it a quarter inch away and then make a cut and then just move it an eighth inch and then make another cut. But before I make that second cut, I can look and make sure the edge of the blade is on that line so I don't make a cut that's too big or too small. So a lot of times when you're using a regular blade versus a dado stack to do a small dado like this, you'll end up with this strip in the center. And you can just clear that out with a small chisel or even a screwdriver or just anything. It's real thin, just uh, anything to clear out the slot. every wine bottle this style typically is about 12 inches this one's a little bit less or maybe right at it so we're going to shoot for 13 inches top to bottom on the inside so i'm going to head over to the miter saw and start cutting this up i'll end up cutting this kind of knot off here that way we start with a nice squared edge this will be the bottom so i'll cut that to the width of this board which is five inches and then i will go uh 14 and a half right i'm not good with yeah, 14 and a half, and then another five, and then another 14 and a half. So we should have plenty of wood here, and then I'll show you what to do after that. At the time I'm recording this video, if you guys don't follow along the channel that closely, I just got in the new shop. So this is my super sweet miter station for now. It's just a plastic bench, but I will be making a proper miter station here in the near future. But at this point, we're going to need to kind of keep track of what's what. These are obviously the sides, so don't need to worry about that. But the top and bottom are actually going to be different from this point forward. So I'm just going to write on there, bottom and top. Helps me keep track of things. And the difference is going to be we're going to go back and cut this top piece even with the bottom side of this groove here. And that will allow the lid to slide in and out on the top side. The bottom we're going to leave alone because it's going to be a fully captured panel to obviously keep that from sliding out and keep the wine bottle in. But we're gonna go over to the table saw and cut this off now. So we got all our pieces cut, we can kind of mock it up now. The only downside to this method, some people may not like it, I really don't care that much on something that I'm trying to do quickly and give away as a gift, is you're able to see these notches right here where the blade came all the way through. If you really don't like that and you want to spend a little bit more time, what you can do is take a quarter inch router with an edge guide or something, come in as far as you need to, to allow room for this, which would be what half inch, uh, a little more, whatever it is, plunge down, go over and come out and that will leave these ends closed. So you won't be able to see them, or you could just do mitered corners and you won't be able to see them that way either. But for the sake of this video, doing it quick, and uh, just something most people can do easily. We're doing it this way. Next step, I'm gonna clamp this together and get a measurement of how big our panels need to be. So with this floating panel method, it's gonna be just that. It's gonna be floating. We're not gonna glue it in. We're not gonna make it exactly to fit. So what we're gonna do is take this inside measurement, add about three eighths to it because it's a quarter inch on both sides. So that'd be half inch, but you don't wanna take up that whole room with the panel. That way there's room for the outside wood to move around as the seasons change and things like that. So we're gonna take the inside measurement, add a quarter, uh, what did I say? Three eighths of an inch and do the same thing this way. That way the panel has about an eighth inch on two sides or 16th all the way around to move. I almost made a mistake because the bottom will be that size, but the top will not. 
because we want the top to come all the way out to the edge. Perfect workbench, not at all. Move this inside to out here. So 14 altogether. Let's try to slide this in and see what happens. It's a little bit long. So trim it back just a little bit so it sits flush up against that edge. There we go. Nice and flush. So now I think we're ready to do some sanding before we put it together. It's a lot easier to do it that way. So I'll get to sanding all this and then we'll get it put together. Now we can get to assembly. This is the backside of that walnut ply for the bottom. It kind of matches the inside actually, so it looks pretty good. But what we're gonna do is glue, clamp, get the bottom piece in there as well, get everything nice and straight, and then we can drill, countersink, and put our screws in, and that'll act as clamps so we can take the top clamp, or these clamps off, and it'll pretty much be done. So this is what I use for this. It's a tapered bit and then it's got a 3 8 inch countersink up here that you can run down into the wood to clearance out some space for that dowel to go. We're going to be using 3 8 inch dowels obviously. This is a DeWalt I believe and you can find these in Home Depot around all the other drill bits. They're super handy. I use them all the time. Obviously this one's at the end of its life and I can't find my new one unfortunately but it should work. So my original plan for this was to use walnut dowels to give it some contrast, but I can't find any anywhere without driving like 45 minutes one way to pick them up. So I just ran to Home Depot and grabbed this birch uh, 3 8 dowel. It was like $1.50, which is pretty good. So I'm gonna cut off like inch sections just to make sure I have plenty sticking out when I glue it in. And then uh, we'll glue them in and then trim them off once they're dry. So all I'm doing here is just giving it a little round over so it'll go into the hole a little easier. Now we can glue them in. You can hear that sound change when you get to the bottom. I realized a couple of mistakes I made this morning already. One is I didn't have my mic plugged into the right port, so the audio probably sounded horrible. Um, apologize if that made it into the final video. And also, this will probably stay together a lot better if I actually put the screws in before the plugs. So we're gonna pull these back out, put the screws in, and then uh, put all the plugs back in. It happens. There we go. Just gotta get the right technique. Apparently wiggling. I think I can reuse these, most of them. All right, let's put the screws in and then, and then the plugs, second. I need more screws. What is happening to me today? Got them. I think these are longer. Oh well, be fine. This driver's kind of loud, but it has tons of power. All right, now the plugs. Re-glue. Making a mess.
Okay, now we wait. While that glue dries, I want to take a second and thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Home Depot. They invited me to be part of the prospective program for 2021 and 22. For this project, they sent me out the rigid four-piece toolkit, which includes the driver, drill, a reciprocating saw, as well as a multi-tool, which you'll see in just a second. I think it's a good thing to have in the shop. I don't see a lot of woodworkers using a multi-tool, so I'm excited to incorporate it into my future projects and see how we can use it around a wood shop. And also, they sent me the Ryobi 18-gauge and 16-gauge brad nailers cordless, so you don't have to drag the air, air line around, which will be nice. I've actually wanted this for quite a while, so I'm glad I have it in the shop now to utilize. I'll leave links to these and everything else I use in the video down in the description below for you guys to check out, and I uh, appreciate the support. All right, back to the video. All right, it's been about an hour, hour and a half, something like that, plenty of time. Take the clamps off, and now what I want to do is utilize that multi-tool I was talking about. So here's the multi-tool I got from them. It's the Rigid. It is uh, really ergonomic. I like that best about it. Also, it's a toolless change. So you just pop this up, take the blade off, put a new one on. It's adjustable speed, um, but mostly it's light and it's easy to handle. So I got this fine tooth flush trim blade here, but what I wanna do first is put down some tape to try to protect this. Normally what I do is use like a, a Japanese pull saw or flush cut saw of some sort to trim these off, but I want to try this down and see how it works. Pretty good. See, it kind of tore the tape up, but I don't think it messed up the wood. So, tape did its job. Now I can just sand those flush and be good to go. And get the rest of them cut off. The last piece I want to put on here is a little handle for the top. I'll just glue it on there. This is a piece of scrap from the coasters we just made. And that way you'll have some way to grab it to slide the lid in and out. So I'll get that glued on and we can continue to do a final sand and put some finish on this thing to see what it looks like. Before I add this on, I wanna actually do a little bit of sanding. So I just wanna break over the corners. A little bit of saw marks in there. I wanna very lightly sand the corners of this ply. I don't want to do too much because then it'll reveal the MDF. But I also don't want it to splinter. Looks pretty good. All right, I'm gonna get it glued on. Try to be sparing with the glue so I don't want it to, I do want it to come out of the bottle, however. Well, that's nice. This glue I'm using is a quick and thick from Titebond and it actually dries clear. So if you get a little bit of squeeze out, it's not gonna be the end of the world. I'm just gonna utilize the edge of my bench, try to get it pretty centered. Just clamp it down. This glue dries pretty fast, so shouldn't have to leave it for too long. Let that dry and move on to final sanding the box. <laughs> It's time for finish. I'm going to go back to that hard oil and wax blend. I really like this stuff, especially when it's big flat surfaces like this, so you don't have to worry about getting into a bunch of small crevices and stuff like the coasters. This stuff works really good on like tables and desks. And I just like the natural color and sheen that it leaves. No shininess, no plasticky look, etc. So now we got the bottom and the top finished. I'm gonna let it sit for a while, let it cure before I've actually put it together. So we'll move on to the third and final project while this dries and then we'll come back and show you the finished product of this. So when I started this video, I knew I wanted to do three projects you could give away for Christmas gifts or sell. 
that you could do quickly in the shop. And I knew I wanted to do the coasters and the wine box, but I wasn't quite sure what I wanted the third one to be. I thought about a serving tray or a cutting board, but everybody makes those and I have videos on those already. So I thought maybe it'd be cool to do a nice modern style pencil holder and these pallet coasters kind of gave me the inspiration to do that. So let's get into that build. So I don't know about you, but walnut is one of my favorite woods to work with. I found this piece in my cutoff pile. It's three and a half inches wide, 24 inches long, and three quarters of an inch thick. So I thought about doing this with just the full three quarter, but I think that'll be a little bit too bulky for what I'm going for. So I'm gonna run over the planer and plane this down to a half inch. I say run over to the planer like it's mounted somewhere I can actually use it. Nope, it's a nightmare to get out and a potential back injury. But for now, it is what it is. I need to build a cart for that thing. Did not foresee this when I was setting the shop up. It's fine. We have an extension cord and a plug-in. Look at that. Seems safe. No trip hazards or nothing. We're just gonna pretend this doesn't isn't really how I do things. It is 80% of the time. So much prep for one board. All right, now that this thing is down to a half inch thick, what I'm gonna do is set my fence to a half inch so we get half inch by half inch squares and just cut as many strips as I can get out of this and then we will cut them down to final length. All right, we got our strips all cut, ended up with five of them. What I'm gonna do now is cut them down into four inch sections because I want this to be four by four and then about five inches tall or something in that area. For the base, I think I might actually use a different wood. I just like using contrasting colors, so I think it'll be kind of cool. But what I'm gonna do is get out a uh, miter gauge and cut these with that because it's a little safer than trying to do it on the miter saw and it'll leave a little cleaner cut. So this is a pretty glorified miter gauge. You can use the one that comes with your saw or a sled or anything like that. But I like this one because it has the stop block so I can set it up for four inches and just make repeated cuts and I know they're all gonna be exactly the same. Now that all the pieces are cut, we can start assembling. All right, I got the square set up here like we did with the coasters. Just try to keep everything as square as possible. And I also have some type bond to dark, which is made for like walnut and darker woods. That way, if you do get some squeeze out, which I'm sure I will, it's not as noticeable as the white glue. And then we'll be securing it all with some one inch long 18 gauge brad nails with the uh, Ryobi Airstrike. So what I wanna do is the bottom two will be the top of it actually. And so I want to drive nails from the bottom up. So this will be the top, put a piece on, drive from the bottom up. And then each time I put a nail in, I wanna kinda of offset it from the next one so the brad nails aren't hitting each other. So you don't wanna do it all in the center, if that makes sense. Once we get to the bottom, we'll just put the bottom on nail from the bottom. You won't see any of the brad nails, hopefully. At least that's a thought. So once I flipped it over, it looks good, but I don't really like how these are open. I think if I put these small pieces in here, it'll give it a lot more finished look. So I cut some to size and now I'll just glue them in with clamps instead of the brad nailer so you don't see the brads. While that's drying, I'm gonna cut the piece for the base. This is four by four square, so I'm gonna cut a piece that's five by five out of this white oak that's part of the wood I use for that box. It'll be a little contrasting again, and I'll probably throw a chamfer or something on there just to dress it up a little bit. Mm. 
Instead of using a router, I have my table saw blade set to 45 degrees, and then I have my fence set to four and three quarter. So I'll basically be just taking a quarter inch chamfer off. So I'll just run this through on each side and see what it looks like. It may take a little more off, I'm not sure yet. So I got this out of the clamps and I made another base off camera actually that's the same thing just with a bigger chamfer just to see which one I liked better. And I'm not sure, this one looks pretty good but it's kind of bulky I think. But this one I think I like best because the chamfer comes all the way up to the base. It just looks kind of cool. Let me know in the comments down below which one you guys would pick. But I think I'm gonna go with this one. <laughs> Then what I'm doing is just taking the sanding sponge and just breaking over the really sharp corners. I don't want to like round it over anything. I just want to make it to where there's not going to be any splinters or anything like that. Then I can get it mounted to the base and then we'll get some finish on there. I really like to have a big overhang on my assembly table so I can utilize it for clamping. So what I'll do is just get it close here, put some glue on, and then I'll use a clamp and clamp the whole thing from the top, probably put a board across here just to have an even clamping pressure. And that way the foot of the clamp can get underneath my table and clamp from the center. So should be good. Actually what I can do is use the other base I was gonna use. Sure, it's all fairly centered. I think we're good. Maybe I should glue this on and put a candle in it or something. <laughs> Siren. I thought ambulances went fast. Taking their time. While that cures, I'll turn my attention back to the wine box. It's all cured up now. Well, mostly cured. It's been a day. So Let's see if the top goes in, first of all. Got to push down on just a little bit because it's warped, but I'm kind of glad it's warped because like I said, that tension will actually keep the lid fairly snug, but looks pretty good, I think. Some people, like I said, might not like these little saw, saw holes. Um, and like I said, you could get rid of those by just using a router with a quarter inch bit instead and stopping before you get to the end. But I think it's all right. And the plugs look pretty good. I'd rather have done walnut ones, but it's all right. So I got this uh, cardboard shredding stuff. I think that will be good for this. Thought about using like wood shavings or something, but I had this on hand. So we're gonna use this instead. Just put a little bit in the bottom there. You can put the wine bottle in and then kind of stuff it around it. Make it a mess. That looks pretty good. And when I actually go to put the actual bottle of wine in here, I'll probably put some tissue paper or something over the top or maybe just cover it with more of this before I slide the lid on to keep it from moving around and hitting the lid. But that'll work. It's pretty good, I think. What do you guys think? All right, should be dry now or cured, whatever you want to call it. And that's kind of our final product minus finish. I think what I'm gonna do is uh, use the lacquer spray on this as well because of all these small areas. I think the lacquer will be the easiest. So let's get some finish on it and see what it looks like. And there we go, three quick projects done. If you guys like these small types of projects and these videos with several things in them, I'll leave another one linked right there that's real similar you can check out after this. 
Special thanks to Home Depot for sponsoring this video. I hope this inspires you guys to get out in the shop, make something cool, even if it's small and quick like these, something you can do over the weekend. And leave me a comment down below letting me know the things you make in the shop to give away over the holidays. I really appreciate the support, and we'll see you guys on the next one.